Katharina Grave and I'm presenting my research on co-creation in living labs, which has been presented at the Innovation and Product Development Management Conference in Porto. The work is co-authored by Dr. Veronica Martinez and Professor Andy Neely. Today I'm going to speak about the specific project objectives that motivates companies to carry out co-creation projects in living labs. And I'm comparing those objectives to the final project outcomes they have achieved. So first I'm going to introduce um, the study that I'm presenting and I will speak then about the Living Lab Josephs and its key features. And finally, I will present the project objectives that companies pursue in Living Labs and compare them against the project outcomes. So before I introduce the study in more detail, I would like to briefly explain what do I mean with co-creation and what is a Living Lab? So co-creation is about collective creativity where more than one individual is involved and the outcome is not known in advance. In comparison, a living lab, which aligns with the idea of co-creation, is about multiple stakeholders that are involved for the creation, prototyping, validating and testing of new technologies, products, services and systems in a real life context. And I will go back to this definition and explain in more detail what a living lab looks like um, in relation to the example of Josephs. So first, it's quite important to mention that this addresses a very big gap in the literature. So existing literature does not really provide sufficient insights into the motivation of companies that pursue co-creation projects in living labs. And often those studies only describe whether companies aim to generate new ideas, refine existing ones, or actually co-create together with other stakeholders. But the specific motivations that companies pursue or the innovation uncertainty they're trying to address in living labs is not really discussed. So some studies, they more imply that companies use living labs to understand the market acceptance of their product or service or carry out product testing. Other studies highlight the opportunity for networking, but no one has fully explored the variety of reasons that drive companies into living labs. And at the same time, there's a lack of research that looks at the outcomes. So also during our interviews, we realized that companies struggle to quantify those co-creation outcomes. And for this reason, we're taking a goal-based approach, which means that we compare the objectives against outcomes to understand the congruence or discrepancy between the two. So the question we're addressing is how do companies' objectives compare against the realized co-creation outcomes in living labs? To do so, we looked at a single case study, the Living Lab Josephs, which I'm going to introduce in a minute. And we conducted semi-structured interviews of 14 companies and recorded about 12 hours of interviews, which we then analyzed through a grounded theory approach. And there we compared the initial co-creation objectives with the outcomes and differentiated between the planned outcomes that were anticipated and those outcomes that were unplanned in addition to the original project objectives. So let me introduce you to the Living Lab Josephs. Josephs is a physical space established in 2014 and it is located in the pedestrian zone of Nuremberg. Josephs offers five co-creation spaces to five companies at the time that offer insights into the prototypes of their products and services and allows people from the public to get involved and actively contribute to those innovations. So the Living Lab is open to the public and is run by Fraunhofer Center for Applied Research for Supply Chain Services and the Chair of Information Systems One at the University in Erlangen-Nürnberg. At the core of the concept of Josephs, it is about fun, interactivity, 
and about trying out and touching those prototypes that are exhibited in the living lab. So very important is to mention that JOSAS is essentially the middleman that facilitates the co-creation process between companies on one hand and co-creators on the other hand. So if I refer to co-creators, I mean potential customers and people from the public engaging in that space. And the process of co-creation can be defined through three key phases. In the first phase, it's about the briefing and research design. So at first, together with the company, Joseph defines the research question and establishes a research design, considers different methods um, to investigate the question of interest. In the second phase, the three months test phase starts. So the company and their prototype is present at Joseph's. The start of the theme world is there with four other companies and they receive about feedback from about 1000 co-creators. In the final phase, it's about the results and providing recommendation for action. So Joseph gathers qualitative as well as quantitative insights and analyzes those and presents them back to the company. In total, they have around 3,000 visitors per theme world. Let me come to the objectives and outcomes of our study. So we try to understand if the objectives match the project outcomes and to which extent those ex expectations of companies are met or even exceeded. So we had 14 organizations, both public and private. Nine were large, one was small and four micro that we interviewed about their project at Joseph's. They come from a range of industries, but mainly services and manufacturing. And their focus of the co-creation project was mainly on their product or service. There are seven categories of co-creation objectives that we identified. The first one is market acceptance. So the question is, what do potential customers think about the product or service? The second objective companies voiced was, what is the price that potential customers are willing to pay for our product or service? The third one is exposure. So it's about creating awareness about the company, product or service through the living lab and the related media exposure they receive. The, third, the fourth category of project objective relates to product testing. So the question is, how does the product or service perform in an authentic use situation and not in a lab environment? The fifth one is about market intelligence. So some companies wanted to understand where do our customers come from? Where shall we open a physical store? The sixth one is method testing. How does the living lab perform in answering the questions we're asking? And finally, it was about networking. Some companies wanted to establish new networks with distributors of Fraunhofer staff, for instance, through the living lab. So we could see that there are two broad categories. The first one is about accessing co-creators and their feedback and gathering information from co-creators. And the second one relates more to the access to Joseph's, their expertise and their networks. So here we can see a number of project objectives that I just introduced mapped against the companies that we um, investigated. And we can see that market acceptance is actually the most dominant objective. So 13 out of 14 companies have tried to understand what is the market acceptance of their product or service. We also see that 11 out of uh, 14 companies have multiple objectives and three companies only pursued one single objective highlighted in red. So it's company C, I and M. 
and companies focused on one to maximum four project objectives during their test phase at Joseph's, but most companies concentrated on about two project objectives during their project. So here we can see in comparison the project outcomes. The ones in green highlight the planned project outcomes, so the ones that are aligned with the project objectives, the blue tick represents the unplanned and so additional outcomes that were not anticipated in the beginning. The yellow one that you can see in company N actually represents one objective that was not met and that was because of company internal reasons. So the prototype in that case was not ready, instead they used a mock-up to simulate and for that reason it did not achieve the project objective. And then the red one, also company N, has not achieved their objective of understanding a specific price range. So what we can see from those insights is that the vast majority of companies have more than only one project ob objective, they pursue multiple goals. And also, different to the initial objectives, one category has come up that was not mentioned before, which is legitimization. So, four companies explain that the involvement of co-creators in the project has legitimized their actions and endorsed decision-making internally, but also externally. So, for example, Company O identifies that the feedback from Joseph's co-creators provides more legitimacy internally to the company. And they have said, we have clear user feedback and this user feedback is taken more seriously than the feedback of our family and friends. And our board completely agreed. So this helps the company to legitimize and back up their decisions. We can also see that 13 out of 14 companies achieved their project objectives. Eight out of 14 had actually additional and therefore unplanned project outcomes, something that they did not anticipate in the beginning. And only one company, Company N, has not achieved all of their project objectives. One was not achieved due to company internal reasons that I explained, and the other one was due to the type of unfiltered audience that co-creates at Joseph, so they could not identify a suitable price range. The number of implications of this study, they range from two, based on two key stakeholder groups. So the first one is companies. Comparing the project objectives to realized outcomes actually allows companies to learn from their experience and adjust their actions and expectations in future co-creation projects. So the companies have said, based on what we learn now and by, by contrasting and looking back, we understand better what we can expect from a living lab and the co-creation projects that we can pursue in those spaces. The second stakeholder group are living labs. For them, it's actually very important to understand the objectives behind the co-creation project so that they can tailor the facilitation service more to the needs of the company. And finally, evaluating project success by examining the congruence or discrepancy between the planned project objectives and outcomes helps also to assess the success of the living lab and then improve those operations. So the bigger picture of this research is the co-creation framework, the five P's for co-creation facilitation in living labs framework. And the work that I presented today fits into the bigger picture that explains how co-creation can be facilitated in living labs the five P's that play a role in this context refer to the purpose, principles, people, place, and price. Today I've talked about the relationship between the purpose and price a co-creation project has to pursue. 
In my next webinar, I will talk about the integration of those five Ps and what they mean in the facilitation process of co-creation in living labs. So just to recap, I identified seven categories of purposes. So market acceptance, price acceptability, exposure, product testing, method testing, market intelligence, and networking. And I compared those to the price, market acceptance, price acceptability, and so forth, were all aligned with a purpose. There was only one category that has been identified as a price that was not mentioned before, which refers to legitimization. Overall, companies achieved more than what they anticipated in the beginning. Thank you very much for listening.